Hi, and welcome to our new courses here at FX PhD. We're really keen to show you the new courses. Before we do, I want to just flag, of course, we've got a lot of courses coming back that are repeats and things that are available in the vault for immediate download. But here in our O-Week video, we like to run you through the new courses. And I want to explain some of the thinking behind how things have kind of evolved here at FX PhD. We've obviously been doing this for a while now. We've learned a lot. And what we've been doing is coming up, I guess, for the last 12 or six months with interlocking courses. So for example, in a moment, John's going to discuss our new VR course, which is a 200 level course that builds on the 100 level bootcamp of last term. That's all in VR. But the big thrust this term for us in new courses is going to be doing stuff in what we're calling feature films and TVC or commercials. Now, the reason that we're doing this is we're a little less concerned these days about 2D and 3D and more about offering not only courses that are 100, 200 or 300, but also courses that might be interlocking but kind of complementary. So for example, a matte painting that feeds into stuff to do with a modeling course that feeds into a texturing course that feeds into very, very high quality final shots. And we think that's a real important aspect of what we can do here at FX PhD, which is allow you to come up with materials absolutely at a sort of industry level and something you'd be really proud of to both have on your showreel and maybe use to take your career to the next level. So in a second, we'll cross to John and he'll discuss the new VR course, and then we'll get into this discussion over feature films and commercials. John will lead off with some of those feature film ones, and I'll see you in a moment. Well, thanks for that, Mike. And as you mentioned, we're really excited to have a new virtual reality course this term that builds upon our boot camp course that ran in the April term. Now, we've been talking to a lot of people who are producing VR right now, and one of the issues they have with artists is a lack of understanding of what VR is and kind of the basic standards and procedures of production as well as post-production. So we've got a lot of great people helping us out this term, including people like Scott Squires and Magnopus VFX supervisor Alex Henning. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out and shoot live action spherical 360 degree monoscopic video. We're going to do it in a variety of ways so we can take a look at the various rigs and see what the pluses and minuses are. And then we're going to take that footage into post and basically correct it, add some effects elements, as well as do some green screen. And then we're going to do some audio as well as distribution. It's going to give you a really solid basis of understanding in the workflow, the building box. So if someone comes to you and asks you if you know how to do VR, the answer is yes. And again, this is just the first step in what we're doing regarding our v, uh, virtual reality curriculum at FXPHD. We've got a lot more planned in future terms, including tackling things like stereoscopic live action as well as 3D. Now, as Mike mentioned, we've kind of got a real focus this term in kind of two groups of areas, and that's commercials as well as features. And I'm going to start with a look at some of our feature-related courses. The first course is the second part of our Tornado Destruction course, which is a really cool course covering taking a single scene, uh, adding a town, adding a tornado, and destroying it. And we also have a brand new course taking a look at digital map painting, basically building a desert apocalypse scene. Both of those courses were led by Ludovic Ayakem. Let's hear from him what he's got planned for those courses. Hey guys, last term we started to work on this plate and we proposed you to create a big tornado that we're supposed to go through a village. So on the first part, uh, the first term VFX 301, we focused on the tornado, we've done the FX, we've done the modeling, texturing on the village and uh, a main asset and we started to do the animation of everything. So that's the result that we have uh, at the end of VFX 301 and for VFX 302 we are going to keep working on this by um, doing some DMP for uh, the background, the village, uh, DMP for the sky, creating some clouds on different layers that we can merge with this tornado here and then pass everything to the comp. So VFX 302 is going to be a bit of look dev uh, lighting for everything here, a bit of DMP, village and sky and compositing for finishing the shots. guys. For this new DMP term, I propose you to work on this plate, which is quite nice because of the very big and long camera move that we have here. The idea is to uh, try to replicate an environment from Mad Max, so a lot of deserts, a lot of sand, uh, hot, and maybe trying to uh, add some cars and uh, trucks that could be buried in the sand and creating something a little bit post-apocalyptic like uh, we have in Mad Max that would be our reference for this term. We're gonna have to start with the match move and then we are going to do a bit of modeling to have nice shapes and create some parallax. Then we're gonna move everything in Nuke or Photoshop and we're gonna start to paint the different projections that we're gonna merge together in Nuke. So seeing this big camera move we're probably gonna have 
um, different cameras. We can cover everything with one, so it's going to be a good example to see how to merge different um, projections together and how to texture a big environment and a big camera move like this with multiple cameras. Well, thanks, John. And building out from that, we have Liam coming back with a new explosion course. Uh, I'm going to let him run through that, but basically the idea here is, again, building out from what John was just saying about and being able to take that into a whole new world of uh, really hardcore <laughs> uh, destruction sequences. And we've got new assets for you that we've built specially for this course. Hi, and welcome to Explosion Simulations in Houdini. In this course, we're going to have a look at doing a pyrotechnic simulation inspired by the new Mad Max film. But instead of doing it with live action footage, we're actually going to do it in CG using live action reference photography of explosions and different pyro elements. We're going to create our own elements using particle systems and Houdini fluids. And we're also going to add in some particle effects in Maya. And then we're going to composite the whole thing together in Nuke. Um, there's going to be another separate course covering the lighting and the, um, the further comping of all these different elements together. And this course will focus 100% on simulating all the different elements um, to take the shot from beginning to um, the final setup ready for uh, rendering out all the different passes. We've got this fantastic um, Mad Max inspired uh, truck here that we can, um, we'll be setting up for our rigid body dynamics explosions um, in the first week's class. Uh, all students will have access to that model and it'll just be a fantastic asset to, um, to animate uh, using expressions and keyframes and then to blow it up using rigid body dynamics, particles, um, instance debris. We've also got some fantastic background plate photography, uh, which we're going to use to stabilize and then track the vehicle into a, a number of shots. This is going to be part of the initial setup of this VFX sequence uh, where we'll have 3D objects um, integrated into photo real backgrounds using, um, using the camera tracking. We'll also be covering um, an in-depth look at all the different pyro pyrotechnic effects um, platforms uh, in Houdini and Maya and also how to composite those together um, in Nuke. We're going to dive into all the different options that are in the node networks. This is a great course for anyone wanting to learn how to simulate explosions for a feature film VFX shot. Hope you enjoy the course. Also returning this term, two professors we're really glad to have back. Matt Leonard, who's doing a look dev course. And after that, we'll be looking at our new massive course. We've got Jeff Tobin, who is uh, one of the lead guys with Massive at Weta. He's done a ton of films, of course, all the Hobbit films, but, but his film credits are astounding. He's been with Massive since the days of Lord of the Rings. Uh, he's been there at Weta doing very, very hardcore feature film work, but he's coming in with a 100 level Massive course that allow you to take advantages of the new version of Massive and get this amazing ability to add production value. So this is a 100 level course from somebody that really could teach, I guess, a 500 level course. Thanks for that, and welcome to our new Maya course, which is our next in the Maya Foundation series, this time covering look development and lighting. Over the next 10 weeks, we'll be using the core tools of Maya, RenderMan, and Mental Ray as we look at both the artistic and technical aspects of look development and lighting. Firstly, color theory, a key foundation for look development and lighting. We'll be exploring things like physically based rendering, scene referred and display referred imagery, gamma, gamut, ACES, Open Color I.O. and how to work properly in the linear color pipeline. Next, we'll move on to lighting itself, looking at the key concepts and stages, including how to read the lighting in a background plate and the use of gray and chrome on set spheres to help with the initial lighting setup. From there, we'll progress on to lighting the model, first using basic gray materials and then the fully shaded asset that will light to match the background plate. From there, we'll look at high dynamic range images, a key lighting tool. First, we'll take a set of bracketed photos and convert these into multiple HDRIs. We'll stitch them together into a single lat long image and then color correct them using Nuke so they match the background plate, both in color and gamut. Finally, we'll extract the key light sources, which we'll then use to light our scene. Next, we'll move to the concept and practice of look development, first devoting an entire class to Maya's new revamped hypershader in Maya 2016. 
Next, we'll move across to our main project, which is looking at Digital Emily 2.1, which is being developed by the Digital Human League. Our goal will be to re-look dev the project using RenderMan. From there, we'll look at cameras and lenses, covering the basics of photography and how f-stops, shutter speed and ISO affect the overall image. With our new knowledge, we'll move into the 3D realm and look at how we can use our digital cameras in a more physically plausible way. Finally, we'll move back into 2D and look at the creation of deep slap comps, first looking at the principles of deep image data, what should and shouldn't be done in slap comps, before finally outputting some deep data, both from RenderMan and Mental Ray, which can now be done using Maya 2016. This is going to be an excellent course for anyone who already knows Maya but wants to take their knowledge to the next level, or for someone just starting out. Hi, my name's Jeff Tobin, and I'll be teaching the Massive course for FX PhD this term. Massive is the crowd simulation software developed initially for the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's since been used on many feature films, such as King Kong, Avatar, the new Planet of the Apes movies, and the Hobbit trilogy, to create realistic crowd scenes. Not only of people, but also cars, flocks of birds, stampeding horses, pretty much anything where you have a large group of entities interacting with each other and with the environment around them. So I'll be showing you the latest version of Massive, version 7. I'll introduce fundamental concepts like fuzzy logic and how that works within Massive. I'll show you how to create an agent, how to put together its AI brain to control the agent's behaviour, how to get it to sense other agents and the environment around it, and finally how to output the simulation for rendering. By the end of the term, we'll have created a simple traffic simulation, like you see here with cars driving on the street and traffic lights and pedestrians on the sidewalk. So I'm looking forward to showing you how to create crowd scenes using Massive, and I hope you are too. Well, to round out our feature film coverage, I want to talk about background fundamentals. Now, normally background is not specific to any one thing. It covers a range of things because it's a free course that we give you, obviously, as the name would imply, giving you the kind of background on stuff in the industry. But this term's very different. This term, we are looking solely at VFX supervisors, and we're going to sit down with some of the world's greatest VFX supervisors and discuss what it takes to be a good supervisor, how to get into the industry, how they got into the industry, and any advice they have for you. This is an amazing opportunity to learn for some of the greats. We did this once before and it was a huge hit. We haven't done it for about four or five years now, so we thought it was time again to go to the top VFX houses around the world and hear from the actual experts. Well, all of that brings us to the second half, which is our TVC hardcore effects work. And we want to look at commercials from beginning to end. Therefore, we're going to start with previs, because previs is a bit different in commercials than it is from feature film. And to do that, we've created our own entire kind of fake ad. And to get that really authentic, we've worked with experts from around the world to put together a comprehensive and professional brief that Matt Workman is going to take and do for us. Matt is actually new to FX PhD and a terrific addition to the team. Hi, my name is Matt Workman, and in this course, we'll be pre-visualizing a live-action Nike skateboarding commercial as a solo pre artist. We'll start off by creating 3D characters using Autodesk Character Generator and rigging them using the HIK system built into Maya. We'll finish up by giving him a skateboard and a hat and getting him ready for animation. We'll also be jumping into Photoshop to mess with this texture, and we'll be learning how to light using the real-time Viewport 2.0 system in Maya. Throughout the course, we'll be working with a sample director's treatment and agency storyboards. From these documents, we'll be able to figure out what the director's vision is, and we'll be able to incorporate that into our previs. We'll be breaking down each storyboard shot by shot and recreating those in Maya. We'll be doing some basic 3D character animation, but the real focus of this course is how to best represent a real-world camera inside Maya. The more you can understand about the live-action production process, the better you'll be able to work with a live-action director to help them visualize their commercial. We'll learn how to set up a native Maya camera to represent an Arri Alexa, and we'll be examining how real-world cameras move using tripods, dollies, and technocranes. By the end of the course, we'll have a finished animatic of the entire commercial that we're going to edit in Adobe Premiere, as well as a storyboard and corresponding technical diagrams that we'll lay out in Adobe InDesign. Previs and cinematography are both things that I'm really passionate about, and I'm looking forward to sharing those with you in this course. Also joining us um, is Rob O'Neill, who's going to be looking at how to do visualization and stuff for commercials in Flame. Flame is something that we've obviously covered a lot, but we wanted to do is have a look at it in terms of doing actual sort of things that would come up maybe for TVC. Rob is incredibly experienced, and we're really glad to have him joining us this term. Hi, everyone. My name is Rob O'Neill. And I'm going to be hosting this term's class for flame artists 
you want to know more about graphic design work in Flame. My intention with this course is that you'll be able to add to your already substantial skills with a solid understanding of the principles of good design. Over the coming weeks, we will be showing you the most effective use of shapes, colour, typesetting, and even paint, especially for those that think they can't draw, all wrapped up in real-world examples within Flame. So stay with me over the next few weeks to increase your enjoyment of being a Flame artist, and please give me feedback on the forum so that we can make later lessons more interactive. Continuing on our look at commercial-based courses at FX PhD this term, I want to talk about our next course, which is an intermediate level new course being taught by Eduardo Albon. Now you may recognize Eduardo's name. He's the director of the Last Chick Project. It's a project we did at FX PhD several terms ago. And what this course is gonna do is actually take a project that Eduardo did. He basically did half the shots himself, as well as farm those shots up off to experience new artists in Mexico City. And what he's going to do is actually recreate that workflow and show you how he did it in this course. So let's hear from him what he's got planned for this new Nuke course. Welcome to Nuke 232. My name is Eduardo, and together we're going to break down a commercial I directed for the Mexican Postal Service and redo the visual effects. We'll be using Nuke Studio to conform the offline and together with a guest prof or two, work on the individual shots. Very much like how Spot Like This gets done at a small VFX boutique. We'll start off with a few of the easier shots, like adding logos that never made it onto boxes and removing an outdated URL, a telephone number, like an example on your right-hand side. We'll have a green and blue screen extractions, camera projections, and we'll finish up with a couple of set extensions that save the production more than a few shoot days. For final class, we'll review an online of the commercial made up of all member submissions. Looking forward to weeks ahead and see you in the forums. Well, I have a lot of experience with finishing TV commercials, but there's one guy who's forgotten more than I've ever learned. That's Jeff Huser. I'm really excited to have Jeff back this term teaching a new course. It's one of our VFX Foundation courses, and this one is covering what it takes to do commercial finishing. Thanks, John. Well, my goal is to share my experience as someone who had a rare opportunity to be around at the birth of an industry. Um, so how you can use your experience and by me sharing mine to help you with problem solving, working, whether you're working solo or as part of a team. Specifically, I want to talk about things like keying, conforming, marketing yourself, and a whole lot more we'll get into in a second here. So I've got a Flame 2016 here. I've got Hero, Nuke, Nuke Studio, not really a course on any of those specifically. I'm just going to be using them to show you stuff for workflow uh, and to explain concepts and to work through projects. So I've got some special guests lined up too to help me in the goal of helping you become a great finishing visual effects artist. So to recap, here's some of the areas that I'd like to cover. I want to talk a lot about bidding a job with a special guest, the producers coming in to join us. Uh, I want to talk about doing tests with him as well. Um, and then on set behavior, what, what do you do on the shoot and how do you walk onto the set and become accepted as part of the crew, which is very important, as well as the tools you might need to take with you. I want to spend some time on conforming plates, a very important part of the job now as teams have expanded, getting the plates online for the team to access efficiently. Um, also the conforming finish, the finish with the clients in the room, doing final color correction, tweaks, last looks, the kind of things that come up in a last final moments as you're trying to deliver the job, even legals um, and time management. Those are the things I really stress, uh, and we'll talk a lot about that. And like I mentioned, keen, we'll talk tracking, and we're going to spend some time on demo reels too. Very important part. People often don't like to do them, but a very important part of the job. So selling yourself, marketing yourself with an overall theme of problem solving. So I hope you'll join me for this course. Several terms ago, we had a killer introduction to 3D Equalizer course that was taught by Philomatic. And he's back for a July term to teach a new intermediate level course in which he shares his tricks of the trade that he's learned on the job over the years. Hi everyone, my name is Philip Maddock and welcome to this FX PhD 200 course in using 3D Equalizer 4. In this course, we're going to be talking about some of my favorite tips and tricks that are really going to improve productivity and speed inside of 3D Equalizer. We're going to be taking a look at some things like object tracking using multiple reference frames and also diving into some of the more advanced camera constraints, circle constraints and line and nodal constraints. We're also going to be diving into some of the more advanced aspects of the 3D Equalizer 3D environment. 
we're going to be utilizing some Python tools to average points to create screen replacements when no markers were used. This is one of my favorite tips and tricks, and uh, this script is something you can take into your own workflows. We'll be looking into building up dense point clouds by utilizing frames in the timeline to build up reference cameras to reinforce our solves. Also taking a look at how to estimate lens distortion using the tools right here inside of 3DE. Now this is a really powerful technique and essential skill to learn. We'll also be taking a look at shots that are almost impossible to solve using conventional techniques, such as this one where we reverse a zoom camera to create a dolly track. We'll also be talking about practical ways to render really impressive dailies and how to save out these dailies renders for review by your supervisor. Now, I hope you'll come along with me on this FX PhD 200 course. Uh, it's going to be a great course full of lots of handy tips and tricks you can take with you into your day to day workflow. Well, that's it for a look at the new courses running at FXPHE this term. But as Mike mentioned in the open, we have a fantastic lineup of killer returning courses. Just because they're not new doesn't mean they're not great and of fantastic value for you. Be sure to check them all out. There are over 100 courses on offer this term at FXPHD. You can see them all at fxphd.com slash courses. Before we close out, I just want to mention another fantastic benefit of FXPHD, and that's our VPN software. Basically what happens is you create a secure connection between your computer and our server and it allows you to license the full applications of things like Nuke so you can follow along with the courses, create shots, save your setups, and build them for your reel. It's really a fantastic benefit of being a member of FXPHD and a lot of people take advantage of it. Well, that's it for this O-Week video. Before we close out, just want to thank the guys working behind the scenes, and that's Jimmy, David, and Ryan. Basically, they help with this video and basically keep things running on the site throughout the term, supporting our members. We're really excited about this term, a fantastic lineup, including our VR course, which is just the first of many that we have building into the future. But for now, uh, that's it for Mike and I. We hope to see you in the forums. See ya.